guys and welcome to Nick Grit. In today's video, I'm doing this really cute rustic granny square. It's kind of got a puff stitch cornering. I've seen a couple different versions of this, but I kind of wanted to do my own version because I'm actually making three different uh, color variations for this blanket. One of them's going to my mom, one of them's going to my mother-in-law, and the other one I'm keeping for myself because I absolutely love how this square looks, how it crochets up. It's wicked cute and I think it's super easy and when you have this thing laying on you, it is one of the most ridiculously warm blankets uh, out there. I've always found it's, it's kind of a, it, it's hard to think about it like this, but Granny Square Blankets are some of the warmest blankets you'll ever see, even though they've got all these holes in them. I don't know, I just, I think that they're super warm. You wouldn't think that they are warm, but they are very warm, and I've made quite a few. Um, I'm also going to do a follow-up video after this showing how I attach all of my Granny Squares, how I, how I sew them together. And so I just wanted to do a quick little variation of this. I've seen a couple different versions, but this is how I like doing it. I based it off of a pattern that I'm going to link down below. It's called the Farmhouse Square. But I do my corners a little bit differently than uh, in the pattern itself, so just stay tuned for when I explain how things are a little bit different. I also do my start a little bit differently. I essentially kind of force it into being more of a Granny Square style like I did in my first Granny Square video. I like making it so that I start with one corner, one half of a corner, and then I go over. You'll see what I mean when I start. So, all right, let's get started. To make this pattern, you're gonna need to know how to do a double crochet and to be comfortable doing chains and anything up to basically a double crochet. So as long as you know how to do that and you've got the general principle of how to do a puff stitch. I'm going to show you how I do my puff stitch. They can vary. You're essentially just going to need to know how to do a double crochet in order to do this and some basic chaining. You're also going to need a size J or a six millimeter crochet hook. You can use whatever size your yarn calls for. I'm using Studio by Nicole yarn, which is a worsted weight and it's just a super basic worsted weight. It usually calls for a size J or around a six millimeter ish. Pretty much that's how you start it. So let's start out with the basics. I'm going to create a little slip knot like so. I'm going to place my crochet hook inside that slip knot and now I'm going to hold my, I'm gonna put my yarn over there in my little ball that I've got going on here and you're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll notice that whenever I crochet, I'm a little bit different than other people. Um, I pull from the left to the right and most people when they crochet they go from right to the left when they wrap. So if you do that differently it will still come out the same. It's all a matter of how you wrap. I know that with my the way that I crochet, it does leave a different uh, texture on the back of my stitches, so it's essentially just the same. So I just chained six, and we're going to join our last chain to our very first chain here. We're going to do that by kind of pulling on our working yarn. We're going to ignore our tail here. Eventually I will work with this, but don't worry. Um, we're going to go into the back part of the stitch pull our tail through both of those stitches and now you've got a little bit of loop. If you want to do this using the magical ring method, you can also do that. I find that with a chain center, it's a little bit thicker and it kind of stays a bit firmer. Now you're going to chain one and chain two. This is kind of kind of, it basically starts the, the formation. You don't have to do this. I just think it looks better. It makes it easier for me to do my first puff stitch. Uh, we're basically working on making the center piece right here. This is where we're starting. So we're going to now uh, work on a puff. So the way that we do that is you wrap, you go into your center. I keep my tail as a part of my chain center because that's how I hide my tail. Um, we're going to pull through, keep all three of those on there, wrap again, go into it again, wrap, pull through, we now have five on our piece here. We're going to wrap again, go into our circle, and pull through. And now we've got seven of these loops on our crochet hook. And now we're going to wrap and pull through all seven. I'm going to do that again. First, I'm going to chain, 
and then I'm gonna kind of pull things along a little bit. That's gonna be our first puff stitch. If you want your puff stitch to be a little bit bigger or thicker, you can also do it um, a little bit more. You can wrap more and then finally pull through. I'll show you what I mean. So I'll show you again on my second piece here. We're gonna end up making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight puffs in this very first piece. So you're gonna get a chance to see how the puffs work. So I'm gonna go in after wrapping my work, go into the, the piece there, wrap again, wrap, go in, pull through, wrap, go in, pull through. I now have seven, and what I mean by if you want your puff stitch to be a bit, little bit bigger, you can wrap and do again. You can go in it again. I don't want it to look like that, so I'm not going to. I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on my hook. I'm gonna pull my chain through all of them, and I'm gonna close it off with a chain. And now I'm gonna get a corner going here. So I'm gonna chain two again, one, two. You always chain uh, two stitches along each corner after, and you always close a puff stitch with a chain. So technically you just chained three after your puff stitch. We're gonna wrap, go through, pull, wrap, go through, pull, keeping our tail as a part of the circle. I, I act like it's a part of the chaining center. Wrap, pull through go, pull through all of them, chain, and now I'm going to do that again, wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, wrap, and pull through finally, close off that chain, chain two, one, two, so I essentially just chain three because I closed it off and I added two, we're going to go in again, going on another wall, we have four sides here, I don't know, I just put up two. We have four sides, so we're gonna wrap, pull through again, and now I have seven again. Ah, sometimes you can split your yarn and then you have to redo it. True story. We're going to, now that we've already chained our one, we're going to wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through. I just did it really quickly. Wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through. Three times. Say that three times fast. It's not great. Wrap and pull through again. Close off that stitch. Kind of want to be pulling things as you go. You'll notice that your corners are nice and big there. We're going to chain two again for this corner. And we're going to wrap and do our final corner here. Pull through, wrap, pull through. Chain, wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through, wrap, pull through. And now I'm going to chain two. Essentially, all I'm doing is adding the chain after my puff, and then I'm adding another chain, and then I'm going to slip stitch into the very first little V. On the top here, this is where things kind of get funky for this very, well, for the second round. This is technically the first round that I'm making here, but things get a little bit weird on the corners. So I'm going to slip into the very first, on the very top of my my stitch here. Every time you make a puff, you're going to create an extra stitch. Is how you uh, expand and how you make more and more each row. Each puff essentially adds an extra stitch for the next round to go into. It's the same principle as the granny, but you're using um, the puff stitch instead of going into the hole with a cluster. If that makes any sense. So we're going to pull our tail through there. We're going to chain two again. And now you'll notice that there's kind of a wobbly, weird corner here. I'm going to act at the last chain two area as the hole that I'm gonna go into. We're going to do a puff stitch inside of there. So we're going to one, two, three, pull through all of them. And this is where, and I chain to, to close it, this is where I differ from the pattern. I'm going to add my double crochet, um, you double crochet on either side of your puff stitch between each corner, um, and that's what creates the extra, helps create an extra part of the stitch. I'm going to go inside that same hole and double crochet one. Then I'm going to find the center stitch on my side. I'm gonna double crochet inside that. And then I'm going to double crochet again into the next corner. So I created one, two, three double crochets, and now I'm going to do my corner cluster. One, two, three, pull through, one, one, two, pull that kind of to the side, one, two, 
three. I'm now turning because this is my my other side here, and I split my yarn. Of course, I did. Chain, and now we're going to show you how I did that again. We're going to double crochet inside right after. So we've got one double crochet here, a cluster, chain one to close the cluster, chain two for the corner, cluster, double crochet. Now I'm going to go again into the center stitch. If yours isn't super clear, just try to make it the most center stitch because there are kind of some wobbliness. I try to go between the, the, the chain. I try to go inside there between the two stitches, the two puffs stitches. And then I'm going to go back inside this next corner. I'm going to puff stitch again. I double crocheted one, two, three, pull through, chain, and now I'm going to one, two, turn. After pulling it, we're going to go one, two, three. We're going to puff again after turning, chain, and then we're going to double crochet again inside that corner. So each corner, you're going to do a double crochet, puff, chain three essentially, puff, chain one, double crochet, because with each puff you're essentially just chaining one after each one, if that makes sense. And I'll show you what I do with my tail in just a second. I like to close off my tail, so that's what I do there. I'm going to go back into my center stitch, making sure I don't split my yarn, double crochet, and then I go back into my next corner, not go back, I just go into my next corner. I puff stitch one, two, three, pull through chain one, chain two, and three technically I guess, one, two, three, go through all of them without splitting it, chain, and now I double double crochet, go into the centermost stitch, double crochet, and now we're back to our first corner over here, we're going to go into it with a double crochet. We're going to cluster, one, two, three, puff stitch, chain one, chain two, and now we're going to slip stitch back into the very first stitch you have for now your third round. I'm going to chain two, I'm going to pull my tail just for a second because this is where, you don't have to do this now, I just find that my tail bothers me, I hate it, so I'm going to take my tail at this point. I'm going to feed it through the back of the puff stitches from the first time around. And I'm going to do that three or four times just so that it's nice and hidden and I don't have to think about it later. Um, the way that I like making these is I actually like sewing things as I go so that at the end I don't have 50 million tails because I hate tails. I'd rather deal with it right in the moment than deal with all of the tails at the end. I find that super stressful. That's actually the opposite of how my mother does it, but I just... But she likes having more control when it comes to stuff like that. I don't know why she thinks that's just the way that she does it. So I've gone around a couple times. So I've gone around a couple times and now I'm going to go around one more time just to finally kind of cut it there. I'm going to take my scissors somewhere and I'm going to cut it right at the very tip there. And now I don't have any tails other than what I'm working with right here. And that's not technically a tail, that's a working, that's my working yarn. So now I'm going to continue with this same formation um, all the way around. I'm going to go back into this corner like I did earlier with a cluster, one, two, three, pull through, chain. I'm going to go back in with a double crochet and now I'm going to skip kind of here. It looks like there's a stitch right along there and I'm going to go into the very top part of where my puff stitch is. It looks like there's a stitch but that's essentially what I'm kind of covering over. I think it makes my... it makes any sense. I'm going to try to clarify a little bit more. Whenever I do my double crochets along in the corner, inside the corner with the puff stitch, I find that it makes the puff kind of pop a little bit more so I don't have to add more stitches inside the puff if that makes sense. Um, but I also realized that there is a little um, stitch from the previous round that I'm kind of covering when I do that with my double crochet. I hope that's clear. You don't have to do it the way that I'm doing it. There is a pattern down below that is not mine that you can go to if you are interested in doing this pattern. 
So now I'm gonna go into the very top of the puff stitch. I'm on, on my second double crochet, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and we're just double crocheting across until we get to the next corner. And we're gonna go inside the corner on our seventh stitch and just do seven double crochet across essentially. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna puff stitch. We went from three to seven and depending on how uh, large out you go, you're adding four stitches every time on your, each side. So on this row, you have three. On this row, you have seven. This row, you have 11. You go to 15 and then you go to 19. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So every time you go around, you're adding four stitches um, between your puff stitch on each side, depending on how far you want to go out. It will eventually start getting woggly, depending on how big you make your square. That's why I stop at 19 and then I sew it on to my blanket. I like to sew them on as I make it. I find that it's much more satisfying to see something kind of grow rather than just letting my squares just hang out and possibly tangle. That makes me super anxious. So I don't let that happen and I just sew them as I go. And that's what I mean by like, my mom wants to actually have it all planned out. So I'm making a puff stitch now. And she likes to lay out her squares all next to one another to see um, with a pattern like this, she wouldn't do that, but with like a granny square, she wants to see what colors look nice next to each other. I understand that. I just would get super anxious. Close off. One, two. One, two, three. Pearl. Pearl, sorry. Puff. One, double crochet. We're gonna go, as I showed you, there's a little stitch right there. It's right where the puff stitch is. Two. three, four, five, and six, seven goes inside of the corner. We're going to puff stitch again. One, two, three, one, two, three, technically because there's that one two it's a lot of repetitions three you just keep kind of going in this same pattern all the way around until it's the size that you want it to be so we're gonna go on this corner again one, two, three, four, there we go. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's my bad. Seven. I was like, we're way too far ahead there. And we're gonna puff stitch again. double crochet and now we are on our final corner for our third round one two All right, so now I'm just gonna round off my corner here and I'm going to go back into my first part here just like I did. I'm going to do a puff stitch. One, two, three, four. I've rounded off my corner and I finished that. I'm now on my fourth round and I'm just gonna keep going until I get it to the size that I want it. So here I went from three to seven. I'm now going to do 11 stitches across then 15, then 19. I'll show you once I'm done with my square what it looks like. And um, that's pretty much all there is to this uh, awesome, quick little granny square. I'll be right back. So I've gone around for my six rounds. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've gotten to the point where I've got 19 
uh, stitches between each puff stitch and I'm going to finish off on my last corner. I'm going to do my double crochet, my final 19th stitch on this side. I'm going to do a puff, one, two, three. I'm going to finish that off, chain two, one for that, uh, for the puff, and one for just to add a space. I'm going to now go into the very first stitch of my, my the, the, the right before my puff right there, for my first uh, stitch in my sixth row, and I'm going to slip stitch off and leave a nice foot long tail for sewing. I'm going to then pull my tail after I've chained and slip stitch off. I slip stitch, chain, and then I pull my tail through that chain, and that's how I finish off my pieces. I'm going to actually just kind of roll this up. I like to roll it like this, and then wrap it in its roll, and put that in the very first hole uh, for my sixth row, and I kind of just hide it that way. Um, in my next video, I'm going to show you how I use a mattress stitch to take two sides and put them together seamlessly so that they look like this on the blanket and it actually is a nice stretchy flexible and seamless way to put your squares together stay tuned for that I'm hopefully gonna be posting that within a day of posting this video and also stay tuned uh, things have been a little bit crazy uh, I posted that on our community board but essentially I uh, took a vote on whether or not I should continue doing what I had planned for Halloween since I missed out on that and it was an overwhelming response of yes please do Halloween but also do Christmas kinda scatter it amongst those things and I had been planning on doing this video for a while so I kinda wanted to get this done especially since I've been working on three different blankets using this um, pattern. I'm using it for my Christmas gifts so that's kinda what I've been working on while I've been in and out of the hospital with my mom so stay tuned for that. Yeah I've got some cat videos I'm gonna work on some uh, Christmas elves and some maybe even do a pumpkin either knit or crocheted or both depending on what people want to see let me know what you want to see um, that's in the seasonal festive uh, vein and uh, comment down below all right until next time guys bye